여러분 안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And today we are going to talk about and compare the most popular React.js frameworks Gatsby, Next.js, and the newcomer Remix. These frameworks have some things in common, but also they do things in a very different way. If you don't know which framework you should use, or if you don't understand what is the point of a framework and why would you need to use a framework, then please keep watching this video because those are the questions that we're going to answer today. Now, before we start, I think I have to disclose something, and that is the fact that I absolutely love Next.js. It's my favorite framework. It's not only easy to use, it's also very easy to learn. It gets better with every version that they release, and it has so many optimizations and so many nice features that sometimes I can't believe it's free. But anyways, we're still going to be looking at the other frameworks because they do have valuable things to offer that I am sure we are going to find useful. Now to start, let's first remember the difference between a framework and a library. You, the developer, use a library. You call a library when and where you need to. In contrast, a framework calls your code. As you will see in this video, when we use any of these frameworks, we are going to have to put our code in certain places and in certain specific files. We have to write the code in a certain way, and if we conform to the rules, everything will work well. Gatsby, Remix, and Next.js, they all have their differences, of course, but they converge in fixing a very common problem that many developers have. And that is a problem that has to do with client-side rendering. When you make a React application by yourself, this application will by default be client-side rendered, which means that only after the user goes to your website and downloads the JavaScript files, React will run and React will very quickly build the UI of your application. This is because, remember, React is the one building the UI of your application. So if the user does not have JavaScript enabled, which to be fair is not that common, but still, some people like that exist, or if the user is in a slow connection with a slow phone and they take a long time to download your JavaScript files and the phone takes a long time to process those JavaScript files, there will be a place in time where the user is not going to see anything from your website, just a white screen with no UI. So what all these frameworks do is to fix this problem in one way or another. Of course, this is not the only problem they fixed, but I chose to show you this one because it allows us to expose how different these frameworks are from each other. So let's get started with Gatsby. But before we do, if you are enjoying this content, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It's free for you, but it helps me a lot. So here is how the most basic Gatsby project looks like. Inside of the pages folder, we have two files, index.js and about.js. The files inside of the pages folder will map directly to a URL. So when I run the command Gatsby develop, and I go to localhost in my browser, the component exported from the index.js file will be on my homepage, since that is the index page. And the component exported from the about.js page will be on the slash about page. As you saw, here we have a framework in action. Gatsby is calling our code. All we have to do is put the files index and about.js in the pages folder, and that's enough for Gatsby to put those contents in the URLs in our browser. We didn't do anything, we didn't do the settings, we didn't make a router, we didn't do anything. Gatsby started and it called our code from the pages folder. Okay, so to see how Gatsby fixes this client-side rendering problem, let's now run the command Gatsby build. After we do this, we will see that Gatsby will create a folder called public in our application. This is the folder that we're going to upload to our server to give to our users. And it is in this folder where we can see that Gatsby has generated two HTML files, both for the index and the about page. If you open these files, you will see that these files are a normal HTML with the code that we wrote on the pages folder, plus some other extra code. So what's going on in here? Gatsby is taking your React components in the pages folder and is rendering them into normal HTML in the public folder. This way, when your users go to your website, they will see the UI of your application immediately without having to wait for JavaScript or React.js to load. While your users are looking at the HTML, in the background, React.js will be downloaded, the code will be executed, and then when React is ready, React is going to sync with the HTML and is going to basically take over your page to make it a fully interactive application. 
As you can see, this is way better than having to wait for JavaScript to load so we can see something. The way Gatsby does it is that Gatsby pre-generates some HTML page that the user will be able to at least see. And then after the page loads, everything will be interactive. The user is not going to notice. But this is not all that Gatsby does. Gatsby, unlike Next.js and Remix, has something called plugins. And this is when Gatsby shines. Plugins allow you to add data to your application before the pre-rendered HTML is generated. After creating a Gatsby config file and adding some code there, I am telling Gatsby that in a new folder called posts, I am going to be writing down markdown files for my blog. Because of the plugins in my Gatsby config file, when I go to my index page using GraphQL, I am now going to be able to extract data from those markdown files. Gatsby will run that query and give me the data from my markdown files as the props of my home page before the page is generated. And now all I have to do is show the data in the page as prettily as I want. And as you can see, the content that was on my markdown pages is now automatically in the React world. This is just a taste of how Gatsby plugins work and it shows us why Gatsby is such a good choice if you are building a static website like a landing page or a blog. Using plugins, you can pre-generate HTML pages with data that you can bring from any where you want. For example, a API or a CMS or the way we did it using the file system. For example, you could use WordPress to write and manage your blog. And then you can use a Gatsby WordPress plugin to bring that data from the WordPress API and pre-generate all the posts in your database. So when the user goes to your website, the post will already be there, preloaded for them. So for me, the verdict is that if you want to make interactive, static, pre-generated websites like landing pages or blogs, and you don't mind learning a little bit of GraphQL in the process, then Gatsby is a very good choice. Now let's move on to the new boy called Remix. Remix is a super new and fresh framework that is coming from the creators of React Router. Remix was originally not free. You had to pay between $250 and $1,000 to be able to use it, but now it's free to use. When you are creating a Remix project in your console, they are going to ask you where you are going to deploy your project, in what kind of server is your project going to live. Now, based on what we've seen with Gatsby before, you might be wondering why do we have to choose a server to deploy? Aren't just we going to be pre-generating HTML files the way Gatsby does? The answer is no. Remix needs a server because Remix runs in the server and in the browser. The client-side rendering issue that we have been talking about is solved by Remix right from the start because by default, if you go to a website that is using Remix, at every request on demand, when you go there, Remix is going to render that page on the server first, which means that Remix is going to run React.js on the backend and Remix is going to take the output and give that to the user. Now, this means that the user is not going to see loading indicators anywhere. When they get the page, the page will be 100% fully rendered. This means they will see the UI at once. Now, the way we fetch data and the way we submit data in Remix is nothing like what you have seen before. Inside of our routes folder, we have a page called index. Remix, just like Gatsby, will map the names of your pages to the URLs of your website. And just like Gatsby, the location of these files is not optional. It has to be inside of the routes folder. In this file, all we have to do is export a React component as default, and that will be the UI that the user will see, and that will be the component that Remix is going to render in the server side. Now let's add some data to our page. To do this, all we have to do is export a function named loader. In this function, I am fetching data from a cryptocurrency API called Coin Paprika. Then in the body of our UI component, all we have to do is use the use loader data function to get that data and be able to use it. Done. That's it. As you can see, we're just explaining to the framework what we would like to happen. We're just explaining to the framework where our data is needed and the framework is doing the rest for us. When we go to our browser and we refresh the page, we're going to see the data there immediately because remember, Remix is server-side rendered. This means that in our loader function, we are able to call the database directly. 
that is not going to be a security risk because again, this function runs on the server. This also means that we don't have to create API URLs or we don't have to use user state because we know that the data is going to be in our code when we need to. So we don't have to handle loading states. As you can see, this is already very different from Gatsby because Gatsby gives you the HTML, but it has to be pre-rendered. Remix generates this HTML on demand. So we saw how easy it is to fetch data with Remix. Now let's see how easy it is to submit data with Remix. Let's create a new file called submit inside of the routes folder. Here, the user should be able to submit the name of their new coin. Here, we're going to write the form code the same way that we would do in normal HTML. To handle the submission of this form, we have to export a function called action. And in this function, we will receive the fields that the user wrote on the form. The action function will also run in the server side, so it will be completely safe to call the database from there. That is incredibly simple, right? Simpler than normal React. We fetch data just using the loader function and exporting that, and we just handle data using the action function and exporting that. Done. The framework connects everything for us. Super comfy. Now, Remix is super new, but as you can see, it has a very interesting value proposition. It brings back the comfort and the security of doing everything in the server side. And it makes it very straightforward to fetch data and submit data. As I said, it's super new, so we have to wait and see what the community does with it. And also, as I said, it used to be paid and now it's free. So I will wait a little bit longer to see what the creators are going to do with this framework before I jump 100%. But I really, really like it. Now it's time for Next.js. With Gatsby, we pre-generate our pages before we publish our website. And with Remix, we run the code in the server side on demand when the user wants it. But in Next.js, we can do both of those things. Next.js allows you to pre-generate pages in your website the way Gatsby would. So for example, if you have a blog section in your website, you can make a blog section with markdown files using Next.js. But also Next.js allows you to choose if you want to render your pages in the server side the way Remix does or the normal React way in the client side. So you can use the fetch and the use state and the use effect React hooks that we are all used to as well. I couldn't possibly do justice to the super nice features that Next.js has on this tiny video. So this is why I made a two and a half hour free Next.js course that you can take right now for free with me and subtitles in Hangugo. In this course, I will introduce the framework to you and I will show you some of the super nice features that make Next.js the most popular React.js framework. Companies like TikTok, Hulu, Twitch, Binance, PlayStation, even Marvel are choosing Next.js to make their websites. They have very good reasons why. And if you want to know some of these reasons, then please click the link below and I will see you there. Thank you as always for watching this video. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about these frameworks? Have you used them? Have you used Gatsby? Have you tried Remix? Have you used Next.js? Did you like them? What is your honest opinion about them? Let me know in the comments. Thank you as always for watching. Stay happy, stay free, stay healthy. Eat kimchi. Kamsamnida. Sarangheyo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.